All right, guys, so no jokes. These two pressure washers might be the best electric pressure washer for the DIYer. All right, hello everyone, welcome back. So it's been a little bit of time since we did a pressure washer review and the time is back. We're doing again. We're going again on these. So uh, basically one of you, one of, one of the viewers uh, actually reached out to me and asked if I had ever tested out this guy um, from Greenworks. Uh, it's a Greenworks Pro unit and I hadn't. Um, now he had mentioned, so I think it was available at Lowe's, he sent me a picture and it was listed at 2300 PSI, 2.3 GPM. Obviously that GPM number is your best bet, right? Your maximum flow, not necessarily the usable number when you're actually pressure washing. Pressure washing. However, uh, I, I ordered it and I'm confused right now because right here it says 2300 PSI, 1.2 GPM, which is not what I ordered. I ordered a 2.3 GPM. However, right on the picture, it shows 2300 PSI, 2.3 GPM. So they got a little confused with the, I don't know, with the, uh, the, the marketing material, material for this, I guess, because that doesn't make sense. Um, but however, it does show here as well, jet flow technology, which is what came on those high, end, those high PSI, I think it was a 2700 or 3000 PSI pressure washers that I reviewed from Greenworks. Um, I'll link those up here for you guys so you can check those. And it does show water pressure sensing technology produces up to 2.3 GPM. Then a little asterisk says 2.3 GPM at 100 PSI. So I want to test that, right? <laughs> because um, at 100 PSI, that's like the same as your hose and your hose is going to get like 10 gallons per minute. So why would they even, you know, like you can't rate it that way. It doesn't make sense. Um, however, I'll tell you right now, the, the person that commented and asked me about it did pick it up. They said they tested it and they were getting really, really good GPM numbers. So that sparked my interest. I said, okay, cool, thank you so much. I'm gonna order one and test this thing out. Now, when I was researching 2300 PSI 2.3 GPM from Greenworks, they had this version, which they have at, uh, at Lowe's. Uh, on the West Coast, you have to order it online only. I think on the East Coast, it might be in stores, but um, anyways, Lowe's. And then this one down here also showed up it's also a Greenworks Pro. It's also 2300 PSI, 2.3 GPM. Um, it's just the casing of it looks different. So I think, and I went, on, I went on Greenworks' website, it looks like this was the original model. They're phasing it out and going here. Kind of makes sense as well, looking at the boxes that this is you know, their, new, their new packaging versus old packaging or something. So, um, but whatever, if you want to get one on, if it's easier for you just to order it on Amazon, that's gonna be this guy down here. Um, again, they look a little bit different, but the ratings are all the same. So I ordered both so we could pop them open and actually test them out side by side to make sure that they are the exact same performance wise. And then you can decide from there. So uh, let's go ahead and start off with the one in the green box, unbox it and check it out. As always, we're gonna be using my pressure washer gauge. This is a PSI gauge. It'll tell us the actual usable pressure. I stick it right at the end of the, uh, where the hose goes into the pressure washer wand and that'll give us our PSI rating. Then we have our trusty old measuring bucket uh, and that'll tell us we'll stick the hose into the bucket for one minute, measure it out and we'll know what our actual gallons per minute rating is. So we'll get the actual usable numbers of what, these, what the performance is of these guys and then uh, go from there. So back to it now, let's unbox it. Alrighty guys, so pressure washer number one, as I said, is gonna be the new-ish version. I, I'm guessing it's the new version does show that jet flow technology, brushless motor, uh, 25 foot hose. It looks like it comes with my favorite type of hose again, which is the Uberflex hose. I love those because they don't kink. They're super flexible. They're fantastic hoses. Um, the only downside I would say of this one is that it's only 25 feet long. So I'll link down in the description for you guys. You can either order the 50 foot version, which I highly recommend, or you can order another 25 footer and a little extension piece so you can plug them together and run them parallel and uh, then you'll get your 50 feet out of it. So either way, um, but that'll be linked down in the description for you guys. So let's go ahead and unbox this. First things first, pressure washer wand, pretty standard here. Nothing special it has the uh, extension here. Just fit that right over the O-ring, press down and then twist it in. Very, very, very simple. Very, very, very efficient. 
Um, I prefer to use the short pressure wands. Um, I'll have those linked down in the description below for you guys as well. But these do the job just fine. So keep that in mind, guys. It does have the trigger lock. So when you have it stored, it, it won't compress. Good to go there. And on the back end, it is just a basic M22 by 14 fitting. So it'll fit your hoses. It'll fit the aftermarket hoses. Everything's good to go. We have some brochures, some instructions, um, like assembly instructions, but that's all simple enough. Uh, we have one bag of accessories, two bags of accessories, a backing plate with all your nozzles. It does come with a soap dispensing nozzle, a 15, a 25, and a 40. Now, I don't know what the orifice size is or what the flow rating is of these. So we'll, we'll kind of run through these three tips uh, just to make sure that they're getting the same PSI. If they're getting the same exact PSI, we know they're gonna get the same exact GPM or actual water flow. Um, so we'll do that. And let's go ahead and continue to unbox this guy. All right, here is the metal handle portion of it. Put that down. Next thing we will we'll pull out is the hose, and it is a Uberflex by Pro Pulse Holes. Hose holes. Pro, Pro Pulse. Oh my goodness. Uberflex by Pro Pulse Hose. I did it. So, fantastic hose, guys. A little short for my liking, but it is a great hose. And now we have the unit itself. And there it is. So, let's go ahead and get it out of the bag. I love that these green works always come like partially assembled, like, um, like the wheels being on it already, so that I don't have to mess with the wheels and all that kind of stuff. Anything that makes the assembly a little bit easier, I'm a fan of. Uh, let's move that over. Right on the front of the unit here, guys, let me scroll you down a little bit. So right on the front of the unit, we do have your water inlet on this side. It's a nice textured uh, uh, attachment piece so you can actually crank it down and get it nice and tight on your hose. On the other side, you have the attachment point for the pressure washer hose itself, M22 by 14 millimeter, so it'll, that'll just go there. I've said it uh, in the past, I'll say it again. I love it that they have it on two different sides. Sometimes they'll have it on both the same side and then your hoses kind of get tangled up together. Since they're on, on opposite sides, it's just like having a pump in line of your entire hose. It feels more seamless and it works out really great. So let's go ahead and put this thing together really quickly. Obviously this is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, there's that piece. This piece will go on, just tighten it down. Super simple. Um, and then we just have some accessories as far as like a pressure washer wand holder, your cord storage, and this will go on the back here. Um, and then there's actually a little piece that is like that. So it fits right around this. This goes into that and then it fits nice and flush right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble this guys, then I'll do a little pan around video and show you guys the whole setup. All right, you guys, go ahead. now that the unit is all assembled, let's go ahead and look at the features. Right on top, like I said, you'd have all your storage for your nozzles. And it does actually come with a turbo nozzle as well. And there's storage for it right there. Right on the front end, you have this little hook where you can hang your hose. And right off the side, a hook where you can hang your pressure washer wand. And on the back, you have storage for your uh, power cord, which is typically a 35 foot power cord with the ground fault interrupt uh, plug on it. Next, we have these nice oversized wheels and a little advertisement there, advertising the brushless motor that this little uh, unit has. Uh, again, right on the front, we have our water outlet. Um, that's for the high power pressure hose and our water inlet for your garden hose or wherever you're gonna be connecting your water source from. Uh, two. Um, on top of the unit, you do have simple little on off button. And then down on the side here, you do have a, so a soap tank. It actually sits underneath here. And your fill spot is right on the side. And I never use that, guys. The reason I don't use that is because once you do that, as you can see, soap comes through here, goes to the pump. Uh, or actually, sorry, the water comes in, mixes right here, it comes out of your hose. And what that does is it fills your hose with detergent or soap or whatever else. And I don't want that because when I wanna switch over to rinse, I don't want all that material, all that um, soap or whatever else stuck in there and constantly blowing out of the hose. I want clean water. So I never use this. I always put in a 
aftermarket foam cannon on it. Um, so I highly recommend doing that. I'll go ahead and link a couple of those down, down below for you guys in the description. And I think that's pretty much it, guys. That is the unit. So uh, I'm gonna leave this one here. We're gonna go ahead and unbox the other one. We'll compare them side by side and then we'll actually compare the performance. Okay guys, pressure washer number two. Again, like I said, the exact same stats as that other one from Greenworks. This is the same exact thing. I think that it's just an older model, but again, I do not know uh, for sure. But I do know that this one's available on Amazon. So if you want that easier solution, that'll be linked down in the description below for you guys. So right off the bat, again, it looks different. However, right off the bat, you do have the, 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 the name plate basically with all your storage on top for your nozzles. Again, soap, 25, 15, excuse me, 15, 25, and 40 degree, and then a spot for your turbo nozzle, which I'm assuming it has. Uh, let's see here. Metal wand extension, same exact pressure washer wand, exact same deal. Moving on, now we have the unit itself. We don't. <laughs> we have the backing, uh, the, the, the handle. This one's in black as opposed to the green of the other unit. The wheels are not installed already, which I just told you guys I'm not a fan of that. Um, but as far as the wheels go, they're the exact same except those ones are black, these ones are green. Okay, now can we pull the unit out? Yeah, here we go. All right, so let's get this out of the way now. Whew, there we go. All right, so we have our instruction manual, assembly card, all that normal stuff. We have the same exact 25 foot pressure washer hose from Uberflex. One, two bags of accessories. So pretty much the same exact deal here, guys. Um, the only other accessory that we didn't have on the other one should be and there they are, the, the pins to install the wheels. So we're gonna go ahead and pull those out first and get those on so that it sits nice and flush. All right guys, well I'm gonna go ahead and keep on assembling this thing. I'll check back with you in a minute once it's all assembled. We'll do an, another kind of overview and then go to testing. Okay guys, so here is the second unit all uh, assembled. So, a couple of things to note um, between the two units. The Overall width of this one compared to this one is substantially wider and bulkier. That one goes up higher than that one. Um, does that make a difference? I don't know. It's just, it may just be the packaging of the unit itself, but it does advertise that it has the jet flow technology. Also advertises the 2300 PSI at 2.3 GPM. The on off switch is different. Instead of being a push button like on this one, it is a toggle switch. Um, now the soap canister, the soap dispenser uh, tank seems much, much bigger on this unit than on this unit. You can see this one's a bit smaller and just kind of runs thinner. Um, I don't know what the capacity is between them because I personally don't really care. Uh, like I said, I, I never use these, um, but just as a note, it does seem like the capacity is much, much larger on this one. Um, the water inlet is right on the front of this unit and the outlet is on the back of the unit. So, um, a little weird, I've never seen it done that way, um, but I still prefer it that way because it's, regardless of being side to side or front to back, your inlet's on one side, your outlet's on the other, so you're not gonna get all tangled up. Now, you do have your wand storage right on the side, up to your nozzle storage. Around the back, we have our hose storage, and on the side here, we have our cord storage. Same cord, guys, gonna be 35 feet long, uh, with the same ground fault interrupt plug on it. So that's it. Um, other than some, a few appearance differences, supposedly the performance is supposed to be the same. So we're gonna go ahead and hook both these up. We'll start with this one, test that out, and then we'll start with this one, and then we'll go to this one and test that out and see what we got. Okay guys, so as I said, the hose that it comes with, the gun, the, or pressure washer wand that it comes with are all great. Um, however, I am going to be using my 50 foot Uberflex. Now this does not affect the performance of the unit at all. I've done tests with it. I um, have a video where I test out different lengths and it made no difference in the PSI or GPM. So no worries there. And I'm gonna be using my little stubby pressure washer wand. I'm not gonna be using this tip. I'm gonna be using the tips that came with the machine. Um, 
The reason I'm using this though is everything is all on quick connect so I can use my uh, PSI gauge uh, and make it a little bit easier on myself. So I also hooked up quick connects on the pressure washer unit to make it easier. Um, but anyways, we're gonna go ahead and grab the gauge now, plug it in and let's go ahead and test this guy out. All right, and we're gonna be plugging it, in, plugging it into my little tester here so we can test how many amps it actually draws. All right, here we go. Okay, so it does have the total stop system, meaning when I depress, when I let go of the trigger, it went completely quiet. I'm gonna pull the trigger again. So if you guys can hear that, already I am not liking that for car detailing purposes because efficiency is key and my workflow and I don't want that delay. It's got a big delay. You can hear that jet flow technology really ramping up. So I don't like that. Um, but with that said, let's go ahead and hook up the pressure gauge. Or I'm sorry, let's go ahead and uh, do our uh, noise level test. Here is my decibel reader. As you can see, just kind of stagnant noise is around 55 decibels. So I'm gonna go, this is what I usually do is I hold it about three feet away, two feet away, and we'll fire it up and see what the rating is. Okay, so it's bouncing between 82 and 83 decibels. It is a higher pitch though. I don't like the noise, it gives me a headache. Personally, uh, the fact that it turns off is great, um, but I don't know, it's just, I don't like that ramp up and then the noise that it gets to. So whatever, outside of that, let's test the performance of this. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my gauge and we'll test out the PSI. I have my pressure washer gauge here in line to my quick connect on my hose, in line to my wand, and there we go. So we're gonna start off with the 25, uh, sorry, the 15 degree nozzle that comes with the unit and we'll test the PSI on that one. So here we go. So that's great guys, 2200 PSI. Here's what I'm talking about when I'm detailing a car. I don't wanna be rinsing a spot, turn it off, then go to rinse the next spot and have to wait. For it to build up the pressure, I don't like that. So whatever, 2200 PSI with our 15 degree nozzle. Let's go ahead and check the next one. We're gonna go to the 25 degree. Basically 1750 PSI with the 25 degree nozzle. maybe getting close to that 1800 mark, but basically 1750. Um, meaning the orifice size of this 25 degree nozzle compared to the 15 is different. It's a larger orifice, which means we're gonna get less PSI, more GPM. So we'll test that down the road as well. Let's go ahead and test the 40 now. Now a 40 degree nozzle is what I prefer when I'm detailing cars. So here we go. just barely shy of 1400 PSI. We're gonna go ahead and call this 1400 PSI. Also again, meaning the orifice on this is larger. So we'll have to test the GPM of all of these nozzles. Okay, let's go ahead and test PS, uh, sorry, GPM. Alrighty guys, so we're performing this test the same way we always do, our bucket with the measuring guide. We're gonna start off with the 15 degree nozzle. Again, this was getting 2200 usable PSI. Um, let me grab my phone, we're just gonna set it for one minute and we'll see what it does. Here we go. On your marks, get set. Oh, I already messed up. Here we go. Alrighty. So there's one minute with the 15 degree nozzle. 
Now guys, I don't know, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm measuring this for one minute of trigger pulled. Now it takes a little bit for that to ramp up. Now is it fair that I'm judging it by from pressure or so from the trigger being pulled? I think so, that's how I test all of them. Um, so if it takes a minute for that thing to warm up, I don't know, maybe it's not fair. It is fair because water's coming out. So just keep in mind that it may be slightly higher if I was to let it run for another five seconds to where it caught up to that initial part. But for now, let's see what we got. We've got an even five quarts. So at five quarts, guys, is what we ran. That equals 1.25 GPM. Pretty standard across the board for pressure washers. Um, actually a little bit higher of a performer with that 15 degree nozzle. A lot of them come in that 1.1, 1.15. So 1.25 is good. Um, I think that it was rated at, on the box for some reason, the rating is different than what the pressure washer actually shows, but it rated at 2300, 1.2. So we're accurate. Um, now up to 2.3, uh, we'll see. I don't think we're gonna ever get there, but if we can get a, you know, a good amount of water flow, this is a pretty good option. The only thing I don't like is that delay. But let's go ahead and switch over to the 25 degree nozzle now. All right, we've got the 25 degree nozzle on now. Get my stopwatch ready. And here we go. All right, guys. Definitely a significant increase. That's like a full quart increase. So that's gonna put us to one point. Yeah, we're at six quarts. So that should be 1.5 gallons per minute. Let me just double check that to make sure. But I believe that's what it is. Yeah, six quarts, 1.5 GPM. So we're getting great power and water flow out of this thing, guys. I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Like considerably happy with that. Gonna go ahead and dump this one out. We'll test the 40. Again, that should increase our flow even more. Um, now, is it gonna get to seven quarts? I doubt it. I doubt it. If it does, I will be shocked. I'm probably thinking we're probably gonna sit at about six and a half quarts, but let's find out. Okay, guys, last nozzle we're gonna be testing here is the 40 degree. Put it in the bucket. Again, we're gonna be running it for one minute, and here we go. Wow, color me shocked, boys and girls. We increased the full court. Uh, yeah, full court. So we went, from, we went from the six to seven quarts. So with that said, guys, we are at 1.75 GPM at, I think it was 1400 PSI, which is incredible. That's very, very, very good. And probably a little bit higher than that, it takes, a good five seconds till it's at its full power capacity. Um, so if you let it run for another two seconds or three seconds to kind of even, out, even that out, you're gonna have a little bit more water flow, but still seven quarts, guys, that is a top performing uh, unit. The only thing I don't like is that, that lag, that, that startup delay. So um, let me, as a fun test, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and switch out um, this nozzle, again, it doesn't show me what the, the, the water flow rating is on this. So I'm gonna switch out with a 3.5 millimeter orifice and see, uh, maybe that's what this is, I don't know, but we'll see, let's just test that um, and see if we get more water flow. Uh, we'll also test the PSI of it, obviously, just to see where we're at with that, so hang on tight. Okay guys, I'm back. I have one of my aftermarket 3.5 millimeter orifice uh, pressure washer nozzles. It's a 40 degree as well. Um, I'll link this down in the description for you guys below. It's actually to a link that you can get a 2.5, a 3.0, or a 3.5 orifice. Um, so you choose kind of where you're at. Again, the larger the orifice, the more GPM you get, the lower PSI. So um, as I'm pulling the trigger on this, I'll be looking at the pressure gauge. I'll let you guys know what we're getting for PSI. And, but here we go, ready, set, go. All right, guys, so that did not increase us a full quart, but that definitely increased us. 
to seven and a half quarts. So what is that, 1.825 gallons per minute? Uh, let's see here, 7.5 quarts, 1.875 gallons per minute. So guys, that is unreal, fantastic results out of electric pressure washer, guys. To be running, I, I don't know if you guys could tell what I was doing, but it's 1200 PSI at 1.875 GPM. Round it up, because that little delay, but your actual usable flow is probably 1.9 GPM at, at 1200 PSI. Fantastic for car detailing. If you can put up with that little delay, it's a really, really great choice. Really great choice. Um, so that's that one. Let's go ahead and grab the other one that is the exact same ratings um, and see if we're gonna be getting the same numbers. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, I'll be right back. Okay guys, we have the other unit connected now. I'm gonna do the same thing and let the water flow through, let it purge out the air, and then we'll fire it on and test it. Okay guys, everything's purged out. Everything's plugged in and ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and fire it on. We'll see if it has that same delay and see if it has that total stop system. Oh my gosh. All right guys, so as you can tell, it does have that really strong, long delay when it starts up. Same thing, it revs up. Let's go ahead and do a decibel reading just like we did with the other one. The other one was sitting around 82, 83, I believe. And this one, here we go. Yeah, basically 83, so same deal. Same thing there. Um, Let's go ahead and start testing our nozzles. Again, we're starting with the 15, going to the 25, and then the 40. Okay, number one, 15 degrees. Go ahead and show you. So there you go, 15 degree nozzle, 2000 PSI. We'll check the GPM in a minute. Next, we have Wait a second. Oh. Now, just to see, I'm gonna put the 15 degree nozzle from the other unit on here and just see if it's getting any higher of a PSI rating. Nope, exactly the same. So they're the same nozzles that they come with. 25 degree nozzle. The other one, I, th I can't remember, 1800 PSI, something like that. Fifteen and a half. We'll call it 1600 because it's right there. Uh, whoops, here we go. So there's that one, and last but not least, we'll check the 40 degree. And I believe that one was getting 1400 PSI with the other unit, so let's see here. Twelve hundred PSI here, guys. Twelve hundred. So this is what I was getting with my aftermarket 3.5 nozzle um, here. I was getting twelve hundred. So I'm assuming if I switch over to that one, I'll, it'll drop down to maybe a thousand PSI. But let's go ahead and just prove to you guys here. This is the factory nozzle from the unit. So there you go. And just, I'm gonna check, I have that nozzle here with me. So let's go ahead and check the PSI on that one right now. Um, and again, sorry, I keep skipping over these, these amperage readings. With this nozzle, we're getting 14.6. So essentially the same thing. So maybe that jet flow technology that adjusts everything. I don't know. Um, I'm just a guy on the internet that tests these things. I'm not an engineer. Just interested in what the actual usable performance is of these pressure washers, and that's what I could try and translate to you guys. So anyways, guys, here is the 
40 degree 3.5 nozzle. I apologize, I forgot to check the PSI and I'll show you in one second. And we are getting 1100 PSI. So here you go. Yeah, 1100 PSI. So on the other machine, we were getting 1200 with this one. Um, are we gonna increase our GPM with this machine? I don't know, I doubt it, but let's go ahead and test. Um, out of this pressure washer as we were with the other one with that 3.5 degree nozzle, 3.5 millimeter nozzle. And same thing, seven and a half quarts, so 1.875 GPM. Again, guys, if you factor in the amount of, uh, an extra, let's just do it. Let's see here. I'm gonna give it an extra three seconds because, well, I'm gonna give it an, oh man. I'm gonna redo this test, This just this one with this nozzle. I'm gonna give it a one minute and five seconds because it takes five seconds for it to ramp up to its actual pressure and where we're actually getting the water flow. Um, and we'll see what we get there because in the past, guys, some of the best performing electric pressure washers have been those active uh, brand pressure washers. I do hear a little bit of stuff here and there about performance from them. Um, I haven't had any issues with mine, but I've heard people write and say, oh, mine, mine died after a little bit of time. Again, I haven't had any issues with mine, but um, I don't like hearing that from you guys. And this is from Greenworks, you can buy it from Lowe's. So if you have any issues, it's super easy to return. So I wanna see, if, now that one got a full two gallons per minute, um, and it was operating at 1100 PSI, two gallons per minute, but they give you, Active actually gives you a 3.7 uh, rated nozzle. I'm using a 3.5 now. So, Let's try and compare apple to apples to apples. I have the 3.7 from Active. Let's go ahead and plug that one in. Um, and I'll have to test this on the other one because these are getting the exact same numbers. Um, but I'm gonna use the 3.7 from Active. I'm gonna let it run the full test, but I'm gonna let it run an extra three seconds to, uh, to uh, equalize because that delay in the beginning. So not, it takes a full five seconds to get up to, up to speed, but we're gonna let, only let it run for three seconds because it does have a full five seconds of half capacity, so hopefully that justifies it. But let's run it for one minute and three seconds with the 3.7 nozzle, so it's a direct comparison to the Active's uh, pressure washers, and let's see what we get. All right, guys, we are back. I have the 3.7 rated nozzle from the Active pressure washer machines. This is what they send you. Um, one thing to note is when, with the active machines, I couldn't reduce the size of the orifice to try and get a higher PSI. It would cut the motor out, on and off. Uh, so they're designed to run around that actual usable pressure of 1100 at 2000 PSI. This one, we can get the pressure all the way up to 22, 23, or sorry, 21, 2200 PSI with decent water flow, and then we can drop that PSI all the way down to 1200, or possibly, uh, probably 1100 with this nozzle and increase our GPM substantially. So let's see what the GPM is and PSI is with this nozzle that is from the actives. And let's see what we got here, guys. I'm gonna set the, the timer again. And here we go. All right, guys, one minute and three seconds just to even it out. See here, yeah, yep, we are there guys. We are at a full two gallons per minute uh, and it was operating at 1100 PSI. So we're getting the same exact performance as the active as far as 1100 PSI at two gallons per minute. However, with this machine, we are able to get the higher PSI of working around the house and everything else. This might be the best all around pressure washer that I've found um, that you can get at your local big box stores. Um, again, for me on the West Coast, for some reason they don't have these in store, they only have them online, but still you can order it from Lowe's, get it delivered. If you have any issues, you take it back to Lowe's, no problem. Easy, easy, easy. Um, I'm very, very, very impressed. I'm actually very shocked. I did not think it was gonna get those kind of numbers. Um, again, thank you so much to you who, I can't remember your name, I apologize, but the one that told me to check this thing out. It's a fantastic unit. The only thing I don't like, guys, is that delay. I wish it didn't have that. Um, but if you can live with that, then 
get it. It's a fantastic unit. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these side by side again real quick, talk to you really quickly, and then we'll be, we'll be finishing this up. All right, guys, so no jokes. These two pressure washers might be the best electric pressure washer for the DIYer um, for around the house, using on your car. They span a wide, wide range of PSI and GPM from a high PSI with a lower GPM to a lower PSI with an extremely high P uh, GPM, higher than pretty much any other electric pressure washer uh, for the most part. Now, they are brushless motors. That's all I know about it. Are they induction? I don't know. I didn't do a lot of research on that. However, um, they do have that jet flow technology, which I don't like because of that delay. I don't like the delay. It's annoying to me but you cannot deny the performance of these things, guys. The numbers that they're getting is outstanding, so um, I definitely highly, highly recommend it. Now, for the DIYer, for the guy around the house that wants to use it to clean his house, to clean his driveway, to, uh, his or her car, whatever it is, um, I would probably go with the version that you can get from Lowe's. Just because it, it's nice, it's easier to deal with, it comes mostly assembled. Um, However, if you're a mobile detailer and you want to mount something in your truck or van or on your trailer, I would go with this one that's available on Amazon, strictly because the base plate is flat. It's just a couple bolts, you can remove those bolts, bolt it straight down into your truck, van, or trailer, and you're gonna be good to go. And this one, the base of it has a little bit of a slant, so you're gonna be running a little bit cattywampus. Um, so again, average DIY, if you're gonna keep it on the cart, I would say go with the one from Lowe's, or the one from Amazon, really, just. They're both great in that sense. If you're doing it as a mobile guy and you want to take it off the cart, then I would definitely get the one that's available on Amazon. But that's it, guys. I hope that helps you. Um, again, I'm very, very, very su pleasantly surprised by the performance of both these machines. Can't beat it, guys. Um, great prices for this kind of performance. They're both under 300 bucks um, considerably. I, th I think, I can't remember, but they are under 300 bucks. Um, so. There you go, guys. I hope that helps you. Please make sure to like the video. This takes a lot of time to do these ones, so I appreciate it. Um, it'll help the algorithm so that more people can see this, more people can know what they're looking at when they're looking to buy a product. Um, they, they get to know what the actual usable results are of these things. Uh, make sure you subscribe, turn that notification bell on so you don't miss any upcoming videos, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.